welcome to 2020 uh, design in, uh, interviews, design trends uh, interviews uh, with UX Spin. Uh, today I'm joined by uh, Ben. Uh, ben, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your little friend out there? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a product design lead at Dropbox. This is my associate creative director. Uh, <laughs> I've been at Dropbox for a while now. Previously, I was a designer at Medium. Uh, before that, I was designing karaoke apps and briefly worked in a zoo. Uh, it all comes together. <laughs> okay. That's so cute. I just can't focus. So anyway, uh, we will talk a little bit about uh, the design trends for, for 2020 or 2020s in general. So I'd like to hear your opinions uh, about, you know, like multiple stuff. And first thing I would like to ask you is, what do you think about this, the discussion or on AI in design? Because I'm hearing about, you know, like, bridges being designed by AI and, you know, like 3D printed and put on rivers. So that kind of scares me, but also like really inspires me. What, what, would, you, what would you say about it? Um, well, I kind of feel like AI and design is nothing new. Um, I'm definitely not an AI expert, um, so I can't speak to the developments on that end. But um, in tech, we've been using AI and machine learning for um, you know, a long time, usually for purposes that are not entirely in service of the user, making products super addictive or hard to put down and making feeds like um, just suck up your attention. And I think one of the things that's exciting now is that we're starting to see um, uses for these tools that are much more aligned with human need. So um, I'm thinking about some of the stuff that Dropbox is doing because that's very top of mind. Um, we're doing things like making it much easier to stay focused and stay in flow when you're working. So using tools to make sure that like uh, your workspace knows what documents you're going to need when you're sending someone a bunch of stuff at the end of the call or um, just being able to streamline a lot of very small processes to make it easier for you to actually pay attention to things. And um, I'm really excited by these kinds of developments in AI that make it much easier for us to sort of make the design a lot more seamless and disappear and address very basic human needs to be like, you know, like really the basic stuff to feel effective in what you do, to feel in control of your work, um, to connect with other people. I, I think it's exciting when AI facilitates these very basic things that are ultimately like the reason why anyone uses the tools that we make anyway. Uh, yeah. So that's the stuff that I'm looking forward to seeing how it continues developing. Yeah, sure. So you, you see it like just as tools, not nothing to the, just get worried about, right? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, I'm sure that we'll get there one day. <laughs> um, right now, I think a lot of what we're seeing are things that just uh, make tools better, make them smarter. Um, there might be a point in time when it gets out of control. And I mean, that's terrifying. And I don't know how far away we are from that. Um, but it also has a lot of upside. There's a lot of opportunity to use it responsibly and to use it um, very intelligently and to enhance design instead of instead of seeming like it's in conflict with human design, um, which I think sometimes happens in the press coverage, it seems like um, a bridge is designed by a human or by a robot, and there's not any middle ground. But the truth <laughs> is that there are humans who are also working on that and guiding the AI, and the AI can help find creative patterns that humans may not be able to see. Um, so I kind of see a lot of opportunity for collaboration with robots. Yeah, yeah. as long as we're the ones who pull the cords. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I was just thinking about uh, Neuralink, the company that Elon Musk is putting together for brain to computer interfaces, where there can be like very real integration between AI and human minds. And that certainly has its own like science fiction, scary scenarios that you can imagine where computers are controlling our minds directly. Um, but there's also a lot of opportunity for really interesting design work. And like, what would it be if the interface was literally just that you think something? and the tool does what you want. And it, it would be completely subconscious and seamless, and that's kind of the holy grail for interaction design. Um, so I, I'm excited by the opportunity ahead. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, right now we're talking or, or started talking about uh, voice command uh, search or something like that, or uh, the design UI design for, for uh, voice, uh, voice directed uh, like technology. But I think that that's, you know, like the next step, right? For like maybe 
mind mind uh, directed stuff. But um, okay, so here's another question because we're um, we're living in a in the times of like well, like a couple of years ago, everybody was like, oh, like make everything mobile first. Yeah, now it's like make everything uh, voice first. In a couple of years, maybe that will be like AI first. What do you think? Like, what's the brand's response for the the demand of device dependent design? What 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 is your opinion on that? Um, I guess one of the things that I've been observing from where I stand is how, even though a lot of things on the surface have changed as the tools we use change, a lot hasn't. Um, a lot of the core patterns and interactions we use are really the same as they've always been. And I'm thinking about things like as basic stuff as like URLs on websites and buttons. The metaphor that there's in a, an interface, a thing that you sort of press. And I guess with voice interfaces, you don't have that, but there's a lot of these patterns that we carry with us through all these different iterations of form factors. Um, an extreme example, I'm wearing a watch where the hour hand goes around that way. Mm -hmm. um, and if you trace that design pattern back, that goes 500 years back to when we thought that the sun was moving around the earth. Um, we still have that exact same pattern in Apple watches. So there's a lot of stuff where like, even as the tools we're using become a lot more powerful or distributed or integrate with us in different ways, uh, a lot of the design elements actually stay the same. And I think that there's more of a need for familiarity. So like with the voice interfaces, uh, we're supposed to talk to them like we talk to normal people. That's like as basic and familiar as an interaction can be. That's like the way we, we grew up interacting with the world. Uh, and I kind of see more continuity with the way things have always been done as these tools sort of enable us to just kind of um, let a lot of these interfaces sink back into the background or become just more seamlessly part of our everyday lives. I see uh, the role of design in many ways is just kind of keeping it super grounded in the familiar and making sure that all these new experiences are packaged in a way that feels very old and tangible and that, you know, any regular person can wrap their head around. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, when you when you talk about like things that are like evergreen, like basics, uh, and the uh, new trends like that, that are growing on the top of that, I'm thinking about um, design education. Do you think um, new des uh, designers, like, like the youth of design, uh, are ready for? Uh, like, do they have like the basics, are and also are ready for? to embrace all of the new things? I don't know if anyone is ever ready. <laughs> uh, I think the unfortunate truth is that we're all kind of figuring it out as we go along. <laughs> and I think having new people with new perspective is always good. Um, but I mean, I do think there's never been a time that's better than now to get into this stuff. Um, I, I've been marveling at a lot of the educational resources on the internet. There's like Design Better, there's a couple different um, websites, I think one of them is growth.design, that have basically online comic books explaining the way interaction design works. And I would have killed for things like this when I was getting started 10 years ago. Uh, it's inspiring to see that like the design world is finally making itself a little bit more user friendly and making it much more accessible and fun to get started. So uh, I'm excited by all that stuff happening now that's making it easier to understand the kind of work that we actually do. Yeah, and I, I think the the landscape of jobs in design is changing as well. You know, so when you when you say about like you you would kill for like resources and maybe you, like people from you know like ten years ago would kill for for a job like you have now or like I don't know like there is something in front of us, right? So what, what do you think? Because I'm hearing all uh, stuff like UX designer job is disappearing and, you know, like all kinds of different voices uh, in that. What, 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 are, what is your opinion? I can't say whether the job is disappearing or not. Um, it hasn't for me yet. Um, I do think it's one that changes constantly. So like we used to have webmasters and now we tend to talk about product designers in at least San Francisco. Uh, and there's a lot of continuity in that work, but the things you're accountable for have definitely shifted a little bit. And the skill sets that you would have needed 10 years ago are slightly different from what you need now. 
Um, that's definitely true. I think a lot of the work that I remember doing when I got started is now being automated or made very easy. So I remember, um, I'm going to date myself, but there was a time when we used to manually round corners for UI and have a little asset that you'd like go into Photoshop, you'd make a rounded corner, and then you'd have to manually position it on top of the UI to give it that appearance. Um, and now it's so easy, like you wouldn't ever think about that. You go into Figma and you, in two clicks, you have exactly that. You hand it off to the developer, they know exactly what to do. Um, it's not anyone's job to look after that level of the design. And as a result, I think we do spend a little bit more time being strategic, thinking about business impact, how to sort of in some ways like weigh the different trade-offs between design options in a much bigger context. Um, certainly in my own career, I feel like um, a lot of it has liberated me to spend less time focusing on the details and more time thinking and being like a little bit of a philosopher sometimes and thinking about like, you know, if we introduce this metaphor, what is this going to mean for our users? What kind of research can we do to validate these things? All that's time that at one point would have been taken up with much more obscure and arcane details that um, thankfully I have not thought about for a long time. <laughs> Uh, when you when you talk about uh, designing a, 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 like good UI, I'm thinking um, because the, I believe there's this trend of like the big struggle of minimalism and maximalism coming. I, I, I strongly believe that 2020 is going to be like the big war because we've had um, this whole like you know Marie Kondo kind of <laughs> you know, like delete everything and make it as simple as possible and uh, now we are experiencing experiencing more like vintage stuff and you know like neons blue colors and everything but um i think well when I, whenever i talk to ux or product designers they're, they're always like okay yeah minimalism just just like that w would you say that so, the same thing honestly yeah <laughs> uh, I enjoy maximalism. I don't begrudge anyone who who does that. I'd say it's just not for the kind of design that I happen to do. Um, but I mean, that is culturally relative. So like there are parts of the world where people tend to prefer maximalist designs. Um, there's been a lot written about web design in places like Japan, where there's just different expectations for what kind of information you have available. Um, I think for better or for worse, the sort of mainstream web culture is is minimalism. And if you want a website to be really easily understood by a wide audience, that's usually the way to go. Um, I will say, I think like one thing that sometimes gets lost in these conversations is that it's really hard to pin down what minimalism actually is. That like you can have an, a screen that has like two elements, but it can still take 10 steps to do something. And often there is a trade off between the simplicity of the process and the simplicity of the sort of basic elements on the surface. Uh, so it's it's easy to have something that looks simple, but is actually really complicated and vice versa. And sometimes when I see maximalist stuff, um, I'm actually surprised when I look a little bit closer and I notice that it's actually very simple, that it might hit you over the head when you first look at it, but um, once you engage with it, it's much more obvious and intuitive than you might expect. Okay, so, so I kind of feel like you can do both um, <laughs> if you try. Yeah, so in, in UI design, it's probably more about usability and, you know, like intuitiveness of stuff, right? Yeah, and I think there are ways that you can get away with being a little bit maximalist. Like, um, you can look at a lot of the sort of art direction on big websites right now that is very filled with illustration and like really lush, vibrant typography that you could make the case, I think, that that's maximalist. It's definitely a lot of design detail that um, might have been like sort of ignored a few years ago, but um, for the most part, these things are still very simple to use. I think that's ultimately what matters. Yeah. Well, thank you. I uh, I can't just stress that enough. Like uh, <laughs> I I always uh, um, I'm happy to hear when designer is all about usability <laughs> because. <laughs> It's just it. So uh, thank you, Benjamin, once again for, for joining uh, our in little interview. Um, and, you know, like I wish you a very good 2020 and good luck. <laughs> Likewise. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to talk design with someone else on the other side of this planet. Uh, it's been fun. <laughs>